there's two parts. Unfortunately, my phone did cut out again. Um, this does happen occasionally. It's very frustrating because it means that we lose the flow of where we're at. And it takes us a while for everyone who was watching the live to find me. But sometimes when it cuts out, it lets me go straight back into that live feed. But today, for whatever reason, it has not. So this is the second part and we will upload them. Um, they should be uploaded straight onto YouTube in two parts. Fiona, well done, you found us. That's great. I can see some numbers now popping up as people are finding us again. I tell you, it was helpful to be in the same room as Rosie this time, because normally I can't even indicate that to anybody that this is what's happened. But if it ever happens in the future, usually it's this is what's um, uh, gone on. So I'll just go over what we were doing in case you missed part of that. But we were basically folding over the first fold along fold number one, and we were pressing that on the right hand side of the bodice. So it looks like this, that's where we're at at the moment. Okay, I'm just gonna give it a little, a couple more minutes whilst I can see the numbers going up again, and then I can carry on. Don't want to do too much without you guys being here. We'll wait a little bit longer for everyone to pop over. something I think it might be when it does this it's something to do with my iCloud oh, I don't know why but I had a massive cull of lots of things on my phone so I've got lots more space on it so it shouldn't have done this but it obviously still thinks there's lots on there and I deleted the recently deleted as well in my file folder but anyway never mind right let's carry on so once we've done that first line uh, that first fold we're then going to fold it over again on fold line two now fold line two is you're sort of skipping fold line three and you're going to fold line two now we also give you some measurements to make sure that you're checking it's measuring the width so that's like another way of you checking you're using the right fold line so uh, the first fold should be 3.3 centimeters and then the second fold 5.3 centimeters okay then this is though we've done with we folded along fold line number two. So that's what it's looking like. If I open it out, you can see that's where we're at. Then we're going to fold again. So now what we're doing is we're taking this folded edge. So the one on the inside and we're folding it back along fold line three. Now there's a raw edge here that could come out, but we don't want that to come out. We want that to stay tucked in. So we're just going to leave that there and then we're going to fold that back along fold line three. And what's important with fold line three is that the fold, how many times can I say fold line? The fold line or the fold of the fabric there doesn't go beyond the first fold, okay? That's because it will show when it's made. And this is the, we don't want that to be peeking out when it's finished. And it's gonna be hard for me to show you this without before until I've pressed it. But once I've pressed it, I'll then show you um, what I mean. So I'm basically making sure there's a couple of millimetres in between these two folded edges. And I'm also making sure that that little raw edge doesn't come out because we want him to be tucked in. He will be needed to be pinned in um, uh, later so that he stays in that position whilst we stitch it in. But for now, we don't need to pin. Okay. So if I hold that up, you can see, can you see there the difference? So that's the outer folded edge, which is the front, the center front. And then there's one that's the fold that we just folded up to it. And that we wanted to make sure is two millimeters back from that center front fold. Okay, so that you don't see it from the outside. And then the bit that I was saying he was being naughty, the little bit that was peeking out is this little raw edge here. Okay, but I had folded him in so that you can't see them. Ah, Sal's starting a drinking game. <laughs> it's fine for you, Sal, because it's, it's, it's the evening in Australia. We could start doing a drinking game here in the UK, but I think maybe those of you on the west coast of the US might be a little bit early. Um, maybe take a sip of tea. <laughs> so that's, that's that done there. Okay, then... 
we're gonna unfold this and this is where you're like well hang on a second i've done all that folding what why am i unfolding it but we need to finish this top neckline edge so we're going to unfold it and fold it back on itself like that okay so we're basically on this fold line number two we're basically folding it back on itself so i'm still keeping this part folded up in a kind of concertina but that fold line just checking it is two yeah two we're going to come back and fold it back on itself like that so let me just pop that a pin in there wait a second because i don't know if i need to actually fold it all the way out da, da, da. i think we do need to go a bit further no that's fine yes we're just doing that it's just so that we're neating that edge what i'm doing is right <laughs> ah, i tell you it's quite confusing guys doing this just by yourself but trying to explain what you're doing and make sure that that's clear it's also quite challenging it's a good thing I didn't drink last night. <laughs> yeah, trying to explain this. I think it was Byhan London that did a random thing. I think they did a YouTube video when they, they did sewing with drinking. And they'd had guests on and they would do some G&Ts and then just sew together. And it certainly was entertaining, but I don't think the sewing probably was, was their best. Right, so that's what I mean by the folding back on itself there. Okay, I'm going to put that to one side because I'm going to go on and do the left hand side one just to save my arms lifting the sewing machine on and off the table. So the right hand side one can go to one side and we'll do the left hand one. So the left hand one is smaller because if you remember like we've cut this off. Okay. And you have got lines on here to help guide you for the left hand one as well so you do need to mark those notches and what we're doing is much simpler with the left hand one is we're folding the first centimeter away which again will be marked by this first line here and then we're going to fold two centimeters so it's a double hem nice and simple folding over to the wrong side the first turning which is a centimeter and then the second turning And again, using the notches as a guide. So it looks like that. Okay, and that's, sorry, I should hold it like that so it's in line. That's the first, there, the centimetre, and then we fold it a second time into the wrong side, like that. And now, just like we did with the right-hand side, we need to fold that back on itself and line up that top little edge of the placket. Keep that one centimetre folded as you pressed it, um, we're going to pin it like that, okay? Because I've got the iron up, I'm just going to go and press my binding because I want to do a little bit of the neckline binding with you. So I'm just going to fold this in half lengthways, wrong sides together. And this is the binding for the neckline. Okay, we don't need him for a bit. Right, just bear with me now. I'm now going to take this off the table and bring the machine back up. <gasps> okay, that's that. Mr. Iron has gone. Mr. Tabletop Ironing Board. Betty the beast of a sewing machine. Get those arm muscles going. Okay. Ah, oops, just pull out the thread from there. That's annoying. Just re-thread this needle. So the first thing we're going to do is just do that little bit of stitching at the top of the placket along the neckline. So where we've just pinned on the front, right and left bodice pieces. And this is just a machine tack. 
transfer or machine based. So just pop it onto a long stitch length. It's just to hold it in place. And once we put the binding on, that will fix it in permanently. So just this little bit here, that's what we're gonna do. Yes, I'm at the office today, Diana. Diana, Diane, sorry, I can't see. I tell you, it's harder from here because you are further away than you normally are. I can't actually see a lot of the things on the screen. So I'm going to keep this within a centimetre seam allowance because that's the seam allowance for the neckline, as we know already because we've done our stay stitching. I'm just stitching across that top bit. So that was my left hand bodice piece there. I've just stitched across there. Okay, and now I'm going to do the same on the right hand side. Trim those off. Um, okay. That way round. So those are now done. The neckline, we've stitched the top of both front, um, the right and the left side. So the instructions will then tell you to join your shoulder seams, to get, so you join them at the back and then the side seams and overlocking things. But I'm going to skip doing that because I need to, um, I want to be able to show you the binding and how then we finish the placket and that's what I'm going to, to kind of carry on with. So I'm just going to take the right hand side and, work and show you on that. So imagine that I have stitched my shoulder seams so attached to this now is the back of the bodice and it's also attached to the side seam. Um, but I'm just gonna focus on the front here. So I'm gonna leave a little bit so that I've got extra to go off and stitch around the neckline. So I'm not gonna start from all the way back there, but one thing we do recommend with this is much easier if you do actually pin one side and then the other. So you take your long bias strip and you attach it first at the centre back neckline and then you pin one side and stitch that one and then you do the other with the other side. That's much easier. So what I do need to check though, uh, I just haven't read, is how I finish the centre front of the binding. Um, because... We need to make sure that that's nice and neat. I think it's all gonna get tucked in when it turns through, it is. So we just need to make sure that it's finishing at that edge there, because what will happen when we stitch this on, everything in, the binding then gets tucked through like that, and it will all be lovely and neat at the front there. But it means that we're just, I'm gonna pin it, but I am gonna just trim off that excess before I sew it. So if I just carry on pinning, so I've basically taken the bias binding, I've folded it in half lengthways, wrong sides together, and I'm now lining up the raw edges of the bias binding with the raw edges of the neckline, and going over that point where we did all the folding at the neckline that we've machine tacked in place. So it's looking like this. Again, yours would have the rest of the bodice on the back as well, but we're just focusing on this little bit. And then I'm just gonna trim that bit off because I don't need him. If I turn it to that side so I can see. Okay, so like that. So now I'm going to stitch this with a centimetre seam allowance. So I'll just start a little bit down from the shoulder seam so I've got space to, to fiddle around and finish that part later. Okay, oh, I've got it on a long stitch length. Pop them back. And take your pins out as you get to them. Okay. 
Just coming up now to the edge already. Do a nice reverse all the way. Make sure you go right to the folded edge. And there we go. And then let's cut off our ends at this end. I'll leave them at the other end. Okay. So that's now stitched. Okay. So then we are going to flippy flip flip and you'll see what happens is it all gets nice and tidy you see and as you flip it in what's happening there is it's folding back into the position of all these concertina folds that we created for the placket so that's just to show you what it would look like. I'm just going to go back in and, and trim away some of this extra seam allowance because there is quite a lot there. And you may want to, depending on your fabric, you may want to grade the seams, seam allowances. And that's when you, you cut some of them um, at, say, half the width of what they were and some a little bit more than that so that they aren't in one big bulky chunk, which can then show through on the right side. Okay, but that's fine on mine. I'm thinking, do I need to get the iron and press this? And I think I do. I don't come back up. But what we're going to do now is we are going to press this ready for when we stitch it. And the clever thing about this, I'll need to pin the placket in place, but we're going to do our top stitching down and then we're going to come down and stitch in our placket at the same time. I just want to check whether we are going to go all the way of our with our top stitching all the way to the end i don't think it's on there because or whether we pivot because i'm just concerned that if we stop and we come down and do our top stitching we won't have any top stitching there which might not matter um it doesn't say on i can't find the point on the instructions but i'm sure rosie will confirm in writing that is fine. She can confirm with her thumbs. Wonderful. Let's get the um, iron back up. Oh. Okay. So. I'm going to do is I'm going to press the seam allowance of the binding down towards the bodice. A restricted amount of table here. So press the seam allowance down towards the bodice. So you're pressing, almost pressing it flat, making sure that you're not getting any overhang. And if you want to, and if you can actually press from the right side, you can always just come back, flip it to the right. So I'm just make sure you're really opening out that seam, and you're not getting any overhang from the bodice over onto the um, binding. Okay, and now I'm just going to press this and I'm gonna roll the binding seam just so it's sitting on the, just over the edge. So we don't want to see the binding from the right side. So if you work from the right side and you press it so that the binding is just tucked under, okay. All the way down. I'll show you this guys once I've done it. It's quite hard for me to you guys to see probably what I'm doing right now. Okay, that is pressed. So you can't see the binding. It's just done behind there and a press down to here. Okay, so now what we've got to do is some pinning. So we pin it all in place before we do our top stitching. Next time I do a sew along here, I definitely need to get my setup more easy, more easily accessible for the iron. I've got that plugged in a stupid way. I could easily have had it plugged in up from this side, but I was having a practice ironing before I went live. And it's, I plugged it in on the wrong side of the table. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to just pin this packet in place because we're going to do all our top stitching in one go. And we really need to make sure that we're going to be catching this fold um, 
and everything in the right position. So what I'm doing is where that little naughty bit of a raw edge was coming out, I'm just pinning that from the wrong side. So I am gonna have to transfer these pins because I'm pinning it from the inside. I'm just making sure that that's really tucked down. Now what you could do for this, because it is such a little slither of fabric, it's really not very much, is you could hand stitch that in place um, or you can kind of pin it. But if you really want to be super confident, I'm working with cotton, which makes it much easier. But if you're working with um, something that's a bit bouncier, like a crepe, you might not have the confidence that the pins is going to hold it in place. And now, so I've pinned it like that, making sure that that raw edge is really tucked away. And now I'm flipping it to this side and I'm just gonna do one pin at a time. So taking it out from the back, holding that fold down and then re-pinning it back in from this side. one there we go let's check that's actually just at the end there he's a bit unhappy he's coming out okay the pins are making it sort of quite tight but that should be fine still I'm not going to bother with pinning bias binding I very rarely do unless it's super fiddly just because I find that the pins just make it a bit too bumpy and that makes it harder to sew. So what you would be doing now, I'm gonna just do it with my kind of one side of my bodice, but we're gonna now top stitch the bias, so the back of the bias binding down and then top stitch through here and essentially catch all those folded bits in. So it's important that we're super accurate with where we're top stitching. I'm gonna keep my stitch length on three because I really like that uh, stitch length for top stitching. And I've got, I'm quite lucky that with my fabric, I can actually see the edge of the, the binding so I can find a really good position with my needle. I'm gonna move my needle over. And so I'm lined up in a really good place for the binding. And then I'll have to just, we'll just pivot and take our time lining up on the front part. So nice and slowly down the neckline got this pedal this pedal's fun and um, it gets locked <laughs> and we discovered this when we were filming for stitch school and uh, I would sort of film a section and Rosie would be like cut that's enough and I'd be like I can't stop I can't stop <laughs> and I'd panic and would like just turn the machine off but I have managed away with my foot just to accident you know to unclick it but yeah we probably should get a new foot it's just a maybe had this a while to love giving ourselves an extra challenge okay so just carry on down this neckline I'm stitching um, between probably about seven millimeters around that okay and I can see now where I'm getting to the edge of my uh, placket now that's again really easy for me to see because I can see through the fabric, but you might want to mark this with some marker pen so you know at that point where you're going to pivot. Because it's really important that you're pivoting at the right point. Now if you pivot round, you go, oh, that's not enough. You can then move the machine back round, turn the handwheel towards you and do one, um, one sort of an extra stitch by using the handwheel. I'm pretty confident that where I am right now is right. So what I'm gonna do actually, because I'm not lining up exactly with the lining on here. It would be easy if this was masking tape, but it's not. So I've just got sellotape, so I'll use that. I'm gonna lay a piece of sellotape on the base of the machine so I can see what my guideline is for the center front edge there and making sure that I'm sewing to that. Keeping it in that position. Because of this tiny little bit that we've got, we really need to make sure that we are stitching right in the right place and we're doing this top stitching because we've got all those layers to catch in in our sort of concertina um, in our hidden but button placket. So we use this technique also with the cape dress. Um, so there's a cape dress in the, it's the same. This is Dana Blouse's from our Work to Weekend ebook. 
and there's also we've done it with the cake dress which is also in that um ebook as well we obviously had a covered back <laughs> obviously in a bit of a fad for covered plackets then i was i think i like them i felt like they're quite workwear because it keeps it all very clean see it's going off on its own again <laughs> Whilst I'm going off on a tangent too, that's a dangerous combination. There we go. Okay, so. <laughs> to just check, yes, it's done. So let me show you, try and show you a bit closer up. So there we have the, the binding and you can see that I pivoted and went down here. So the binding is stitched on the uh, wrong side like that. And then as we came down, what I've done is I've caught in the back and you can see that's the placket from the inside and all those layers that we folded have all been stitched in place now so nothing's coming out that's all anchored in and that's ready for the button holes to be put on okay so you can also you don't have to do button holes or buttons you could do poppers if you wanted to if you wanted to give yourself a break because you'd still be good worth doing the concealed placket because then it's going to hide that stitching of you hand stitching the them on. So I hope that demystified the hardest part of this pattern for you guys. I decided to not kind of make it up in the conventional way because we would then miss the tricky parts and I know that's what's most useful to you. So that's what we've decided to do and I'm not going to kind of carry on with that. I thought we'd just leave it there but Hopefully that will help you to watch that if you're making the daily blouse again. So we're now back into our sew along. So we have got another one next week, but actually we're now bringing back as things start to lift in lockdown, we are bringing back more people, um, both to stitch school and also to the sew alongs. So next week uh, we have got Layla. Now I don't think that you have met Layla. You may have seen her. I did an IGTV with her last year. Um, I think it was in the summer. She is one of our teachers from London when we used to teach physical classes and she's got a wealth of knowledge and she's actually been behind the scenes in a lot of what we have um, filmed for Stitch School, particularly overlocking and pattern cutting. But she is going to um, be filming something for Stitch School and then she's going to stay on and film uh, do the sew along so it will be um, a new person next week for you and uh, then we are going to she's going to give me that project and the following week I will be doing the second part so we're now going to do our uh, sew alongs for our new patterns in in two parts across two weeks so that gives us a chance to do catch up if we want to do any sewing in between as well um, it's just it just makes more sense and it helps with our schedule too so next week it will be the lovely Layla um, and she will be, oh Rosie's just put a link up to Layla um, um, on her Instagram account and then she'll be sewing the new pattern. Those of you in the PDF club will know what that is. Not the PDF club, it's the VIP club now Lisa. It's only been three months called that, I'm still forgetting. Um, and then the week after I'll be finishing it. So I'm quite, it's going to be quite fun actually because then if something goes wrong I can just say it's Layla's fault. I'm only joking, I wouldn't do that, Layla, I wouldn't do that. And then I think the week after that, we have got Becca, who is again doing some sew-along um, stitch school filming, and she's going to do something um, for the sew-along as well. She's going to do the walnut coat, which is a poppy and jazz pattern, which is um, actually a wintry coat, but we thought it'd be nice to try it out in a lighter fabric, so it feels more like a rain 